Hello, physics students. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what's called traveling waves, and I'm going to review a couple of concepts we've already studied previously related to waves. Now, just to remind you what a wave is, we talked in class about most of us, when we hear the word wave, we think about probably water waves because they're very common in our experience. And a wave is a disturbance traveling through something that carries energy from one place to another. Um, and the main characteristics of waves is, of course, they carry energy from one place to another through any substance. And in fact, electromagnetic waves don't even need a material or a substance through which to move. They can move through a vacuum, okay? The other thing that's very important about waves is that there's no large-scale net motion of the medium through which the waves travel. And we talked about waves, a wave pulse on a, on a uh, rope about how in this case the boy transfers the energy to the girl um, but the actual rope doesn't actually get thrown to the girl okay okay so again this differs from the case of the boy throwing a ball to the girl where there is a transfer of energy and we know that the girl receives the energy from the boy because um, the ball does work on her hand and therefore her hand is displaced uh, through a distance with a force, okay? And again, the main difference between these two cases is that um, is that here with the ball, both energy and matter are transferred and with the rope, only energy is transferred. The actual rope is not transferred. Now, one thing that you notice is that there is a movement of the medium of the rope, but that movement goes up and down. It does not go from left to right. Uh, which is in the same direction as the medium, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit, okay? In fact, the very definition of a wave is any transfer of energy without an accompanying transfer of matter in that same direction as the energy, okay? Um, and again, we talked about oscillations, which are periodic vibrations, and we talked a bit about simple harmonic motion. We'll talk more about that. Um, any vibration or oscillation that has a uh, that is simple harmonic is periodic, which means it can be characterized by period T and frequency F, okay? Now, again, just to reiterate how important it is that there's no large scale net motion of the medium, this is a FET simulation, and if you keep your eye on one of these sort of beads on this wire, you can see that as the energy passes through, all the bead does is it just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, right? This green bead where I have my uh, pointer uh, directed to here does not go flying out the window, okay? So again, there is no large-scale net motion of the medium through which the waves travel. Again, you can see this with a ping-pong ball on a water wave. You see as the waves go through it, the ping-pong ball basically goes up and down. It actually moves slightly horizontal, but for the purposes of this class to simplify water wave motion, um, we will consider um, water to be basically a transverse wave, okay? This is a pretty cool apparatus. Um, this consists of a bunch of metal rods um, connected to a rope, um, with just one string in the middle, and we can send, um, we can send very beautiful waves down the length of this table, and you can see the, it's not the rods themselves that move horizontally. All they do is they go up and down. Very good demonstration of that, okay? In fact, with what we call transverse waves, which is what we've been looking at so far, the medium's displacement, which is S, which is a vector, of course, is always perpendicular to the wave's velocity, and I'm also talking about velocity being a vector, okay? So there are basically two different kinds of waves that you guys need to be able to, uh, to identify and work with. One is called a transverse wave, and this is the kind of wave that you are familiar with when you think about a wave. It looks wavy. It's like a sine curve, okay? This is when the displacement of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel, and it's a series, a series of peaks and troughs, okay? And again, the material does not move with the wave. So here's a water wave which we simplify as being a transverse wave. We saw this in the last slide, this apparatus, beautiful transverse wave. Again, we have an, uh, an oscillation between positive displacement, which is up, and negative displacement, which is down, and the velocity of the wave, notice, is always at right angles to the direction of the displacement. That is the defining characteristic of a transverse wave. Okay, in contrast, we have another kind of wave called the longitudinal wave, and this is when the displacement is in the same direction as that of the wave travel. In other words, the displacement is parallel to V, okay? And the only way that you're going to get this is if you have a series of, like with a spring, you're going to have a series of compressions, what we call compressions and rarefactions. Compressions are when the density um, of the coils per unit length is greater than the uh, equilibrium 
density, and a rarefaction is when that density is less than um, the equilibrium density. Okay, we'll we'll do some playing around with springs in class. Okay, but this is a very nice demonstration of a longitudinal wave. You see how the wave travels down; it's reflected from the student's hand and comes back, and it's basically the wave can be identified by a big bunch of coils that are that are kind of bunched together, much more uh, densely packed than the coils are when it's at its equilibrium position. And again, the material does not move with the wave. Now, in this case, it does move in the same direction as the wave, but it goes, the, if you think of any one particular coil, it goes forward and back, and then goes back to its equilibrium position. So it's not that all the coils are shooting down the slinky and hitting the student in the hand. That's not what's happening, okay? So visually, uh, you, have a you have a positive displacement, which is in the direction of the wave travel, typically, the velocity, and the negative displacement would be going back, okay? So it's a series of going forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and every successive slinky coil does that. So the net effect is that it appears to be traveling down the length of the slinky. Pretty cool, okay? All right, so examples of transverse wave waves, water we treat as, uh, ropes, strings, types of seismic waves. We talked a little bit about seismic waves. Longitudinal waves, sound is a, is a great longitudinal wave which we'll study um, in more detail and certain types of seismic waves. And this little video here shows you a very nice comparison between a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. Okay, And just remember, slinky coils do not move with the wave energy. Now if you get online and look at, uh, say if you go to Wikipedia and look up all kinds of different waves, <clears throat> you'll see lots of cool little simulations. What do you think this top one simulates? And what do you think this bottom one simulates? Clearly this is a transverse wave up here and this is a longitudinal wave down here. Okay. I'm going to talk about wave pulses and traveling waves. Now, if you remember um, in the case of the boy sending the, that, uh, the energy to the girl through the rope, okay, um, and he sort of sent like one sort of bump through the rope, which was actually the energy traveling, that's called a wave pulse. What a wave pulse is, is it's basically one sort of isolated sort of bump in a wave. It can either go only up like this. You can see that this particular wave pulse, which is depicted by a little triangle, is going from left to right. Uh, as time goes by, or it can go kind of up and then down in the typical sort of sine wave fashion, okay? Um, but basically, so what a wave pulse is, is it's one isolated vibration. We have a series of isolated vibrations here in the simulation, okay? In contrast, a continuous wave is a series of repeating vibrations that creates what we call traveling waves. And a traveling, traveling waves look like a sine graph, basically, a wave that goes on forever in both directions in positive and negative. So essentially, this string will look like a moving sine wave. And again, it's instructive for you at this point to keep an eye on one particular bead, say one particular green bead, okay, like this one right here where I have my cursor, you see how it goes up and down and up and down in simple harmonic motion, okay? Okay, now tension is very important uh, as it turns out in, in determining how, uh, how a wave travels through a medium like a spring or a rope, okay? Um, so for a wave pulse traveling at a speed v, okay, or a velocity v down a slinky or a rope, V is determined by the tension, tension T and the density, which is mass per unit length. And I'm going to call um, the density mu, okay, to differentiate it from, uh, from density that you've maybe thought about in chemistry and physical science, and that is mass per unit volume. Uh, mass per unit length is typically called mu, and it's mass M over L, okay. It turns out that, and you don't have to derive this, it turns out that um, the speed is proportional to the square root of T over mu, okay, and uh, for springs and ropes. And for gases, uh, it's, it's proportional to the pressure over the density, okay, the square root of, okay. So just to show you a couple of differences here, um, we have a very high tension here, medium tension, and a low tension, okay. So you can see that as the tension is higher, the speed is greater, and that maybe is common sense, right? If you think about a rope that's pulled super tight and you send a, uh, you send a wave through it, that wave will go through very fast. If it's very loose and you send a wave, that, that wave will be kind of wimpy and won't move very fast, okay? Um, and it turns out that the two, speed and tension, are related as a square root function, okay? 
Again, you're not going to have to derive this, but you should be aware of it, okay? So the speed is determined by the properties of the medium, not how the wave was created. If whatever is forcing the rope executes simple harmonic motion, then pulses are sent continuously and the wave is continuous. So you see here this thing that's actually generating this, this initial first green bead up and down is a thing, is a circular, is related to circular motion. You see that? So it's a rotor, it's like a motor that's going around, okay? So um, this sine wave, this is the sinusoidal wave, it's also called sometimes in physics you see the term harmonic wave. So just be aware that that basically means a sine wave or something that's in simple harmonic motion, okay? So here's the first example, pretty simple one, okay? Diagram shows a transverse wave on a spring, on a string. It's going from uh, right to left, okay? And the question is asking you to talk about the subsequent direction of motion or the motion right after this picture was taken of point X and point Y, okay? So point X uh, will actually, whoops, point X will actually um, drop, okay? Drop down towards this trough immediately and point Y will actually move up towards this next crest immediately, okay? We, and we've gone through that in class, okay? All right, second example. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, so a wave travels along a stretched string. The diagram shows the variation with distance um, along the string with displacement. Okay, so again, this is, a, this is as if you had a camera on the side of the string taking a picture of it. This is what it would look like at that instant in time. A small marker, like a piece of tape, is attached to the string at the point labeled M. The undisturbed position of the string is shown as the dotted line. Draw an arrow to indicate the direction in which the marker is moving. Okay, so what do you think? Okay, well at this instant the marker is actually moving down because this trough is moving over to the left and that marker is dropping down into it. Indicate with the letter A the amplitude of the wave. You could do that in a couple of different places. Letter lambda, the wavelength, very straightforward stuff. Draw the displacement of the string at time t over 4 later, where t is the period of oscillation. Okay. <clears throat> in t over 4, the wave, have, the wave has moved one fourth of a wavelength. Okay. And this is pi over 2 radians. Okay. Um, and did I indicate it with the letter? Yes, the letter n right here. Okay. So there you go. So compare this to the previous picture. Okay. So it moves over just a little bit, it moves over one quarter of a wavelength. Okay. All right. Same example. The wavelength is five centimeters and its speed is ten centimeters per second. What's the frequency? Okay. This is the wave equation, which I've alluded to previously. Okay. Um, and this is really the speed is equal to the wavelength over the period, or in other words, frequency times the wavelength. I got two hertz. How far has the wave moved in t over four seconds? In t over four, the wave wave has had moved, as I alluded in the past slide, to lambda over four. Okay. Now. Uh, if the wavelength is 5 centimeters, then that's, that's 1 fourth of 5, which is 1.25 to the left, okay? So, if it, so this is, um, you notice that uh, in this section of the course, 4.2, there's a lot of overlap with 4.1 in terms of wave basics and so forth. I will be, in each video, in each topic, I will be bringing you back to basics of waves, such as the wave equation, frequency, amplitude, wavelength, um, because those are really the core ideas behind waves.